the organizers of the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Yeah, uh, as has been said, I'm Silas Onyango from KCA University. Uh, my professor has done a lot, so I will just do a few and extend what he has done. Uh, what he did not tell you, professor does crazy things, uh, like what he has mentioned here. One of the areas which he's doing now is uh, speech recognition. He speaks fluent Arabic, and he has started speaking Kiswahili a few days we stayed here. So he does a lot of speech recognition. Another one area which he does, which he has done with the European Union is ear print. If you look at your neighbor's ear, <laughs> you do not share any ear print, the same ear print. Everybody has different ear prints. So most of the forensic studies now are geared towards detection of ear prints where we have thievery and the rest. But I will uh, speak today on the pattern recognition of uh, Velhast logistic ito or processes in market price. Now this is an extension of Black Scholes uh, option pricing model. So we extended it up to Australia level and then use uh, pattern recognition to recognize certain processes within the ITO process. Now this is because people like, apart from the computation, calculations of the parameters, market parameters, one would also be interested in knowing what processes are going on. And if they are so, how many are they? So that you can calculate the parameters at particular process, process points, rather than just calculating the overall. You had a professor talk of windows, so we apply the windows to get the processes. Right, so the introduction of the pattern, as we said earlier, we use pattern recognition in market and, uh, price analysis so that we can make what sometimes we call executive decisions uh, regarding the investment and other type of market uh, activities. Uh, we also use, we have used uh, real market uh, data to test what we are going to discuss in this one. So characteristics of uh, pattern recognition or recognizers are, in this, our case, are robust. In that case, what we mean by this is that they are resistant to statistical errors and noises, where they are corrupted. They are also uh, uh, resistant to extreme errors that impulse noise. For example, if we have a blackout during market time, which is sometimes called the uh, impulse noise, also resistant to loss of data, for pattern, what we call pattern occlusion. For example, if you lose some part of data which you have collected, what is the effect on the overall performance of the data we have? Now, I've just picked one of the pattern or artificial uh, intelligence uh, uh, transform referred to as Hof transforms. This was first discussed or adapted and patented in 1972 by Duda and Hart, and other players have made improvement on the same, like Levers, Princeton, and others, and Duda and the rest have also improved on what they discussed earlier. I will just discuss very fast, uh, briefly, what it's all about, that this change mode of presentation from Cartesian representation, that XY presentation, to a curve, uh, where we have a point XY, like, the, oh, sorry, yes, right. a point uh, XY with a pixel XY is transformed to a curve, where rho is the distance between the origin, that is zero, to the point XY, and theta is the degree of that line from the x-axis. So this, what we have, the transformation from X, the Cartesian point, to a curvular point, helps us identify different uh, uh, curves, straight lines, and later on develop to, to curves. Now the degree, the theta, is between 0 and 84. Uh, go very fast. So for example, I think professors showed this. For example, we want to identify Again, maybe in, we have not drawn this, but we have a set of points. 
uh, and we want to check whether this is a straight line or not, using the expression we had, which is rho is equal to x cos theta plus y sin theta, we can identify whether this is in a straight line. Each point will now be transformed to a curve. So that if they are in the straight line, then what you will see is this. That's those points. Now the point where they all meet tells us that these have been from a line, a straight line. If there was any other point outside the line, then the, the, there would be another curve outside the meeting point. If we miss or we withdraw one point, which means occlusion, we have lost some data, then that point will not be affected because of the loss of that, which is very, very important for uh, accuracy. Now, this tells us that there's one process for that case. If we have, and we then we can have a, a three-dimensional accumulator array, which tells us which point is this. And that is where the concentration, where we have a, you know, uh, the projection, which tells us the peak. That will give us the point of meet. So if we were able to calculate the value of theta and uh, uh, rho, in fact, theta and rho, we can calculate this one, which we have done in another project, which is very, very useful later on. Now we can go ahead, for example, if there are two processes, there are two straight lines. And if we apply the same Hofstrom, now we have that, which is, tells us that there are two processes going on at the same time. And they are straight line in this case. And if we draw the accumulatory, there it is what we have. Again, we can use um, mathematical uh, calculations to get the values of theta and r at that point. Now we did go further, that apart from the straight lines which we have seen, we can extend this to stochastic processes, which is used in mathematical, in financial markets. Now the ordinary Brownian, most geometric Brownian notion, which is used in black skulls, is that expression, the equation two, where mu is the average and uh, sigma is the volatility in this case. S is the price of the security in the market. DZ is a Wiener process, again defined by epsilon, equal to the epsilon's root uh, DT. It is the one which makes the curve, if you draw this curve, it will be rugged, it will not be smooth at all, because of that DZ. That is the stochastic function. Uh, I've just stated that. Now we went further that instead of using the normal, which we call the linear uh, stochastic process or geometric bounded motion, we developed an extension of the Black Scholes model to what is we refer to as logic price function. In this case, this is deterministic without the stochastic part of it. Again, we adapted the Hof transform to this. Uh, and what we got, uh, sorry. Yeah, that is the logistic one, the logistic curve. When we adapted the Hof's transform to this curve, the figure we got was that, which that tells us that this is not a straight line, but because of the, 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 the curve, we have very many parts, except that at certain points, we have those long uh, straights of lines. Again, we, this is not Israeli used, we usually use the stochastic one, which if we go back, uh, we have that. That is the stochastic uh, logistic Brownian motion. With the DZ, where P star is the, is the uh, equilibrium price and P is the price of the share at any given time, and the DZ is the stochastic part of it. We applied this, uh, if you draw that curve, there we are. With the logistic with almost reaching the, the market price, which is the equilibrium price at the top. Now we adapted again the Hof transform to this, so that we can be able to see, are there many processes? And if so, how many there are? We had that, again, 
almost the same as that one, but if you look at the figure, the higher one, this, the others on the other side are now a bit higher than when we had the deterministic one. So this one does not tell us much. So we applied the accumulator array to this. Ah, oh, sorry, this was a, this was, just let me. And when we applied the accumulator array, we had that that there were two peaks going on at this. Again, what is uh, of importance is that we can calculate. In this case, we now changed the mu. We had mu instead of theta and rho. After adaptation, we now had mu and sigma, which, is the, which are the parameters which we usually calculate in market prices. That we like to know what is the volatility and what is the average return, which is our mu. And we can calculate here we'll get two values, or two sets of values. One for the shorter period, for the shorter peak, and the other one for the, the longer peak. And then we can de now decide. And what was always interesting is that we can even get the times when they were, we can get the times when the peaks occurred. So that we can be able to know at what time do we, can we invest, or buy, or sell, for example which are very key. Usually we look at the time, we look at the volatility, because some people like to trade in volatility. When volatility is high, they trade in that. Again, other, some of us look at just the return, the average return. What, how much will I get out of this? So this, uh, which is very, very applied in, in the mathematical uh, world. Now that was, now the, if you look at the, the contour, which is just telling us so those two peaks, if we look, the, we look at them from above, then we can be able to see the peaks like that. Then the conclusion here, what we have seen, is that artificial intelligence can be used and can be adapted to detect logistics processes, how many processes are going on in a given stochastic process, uh, with the simulated, and also with real world data as was shown by uh, Mike, when he was showing the Manchester United Football Club shares price. We did get the, the processes. Uh, it, it is also robust. Robust in the sense that we can be able to calculate the required parameters without, even if there are some noise, even if there are occlusions, that if the data is lost in the data, and if there are some noise, for example, the DZ, which is bringing noise, and it's able to detect multiple, which is very, very important, multiple processes in a given market price. All this time, actually, all this, if you put them, we, after we had made the, drawn the program, we made the program, this is done in a pass of time. You don't need a lot of time for this to be done. With the mat, we did this using MATLAB. Within a short a pass of time, we have all those resources down. It is for us to use them to make decisions. It's also support decision making. Within a short period, you can make decisions without any further delay. For financial management, knowledge of market patterns will also help in the quality of decision to be made, which is very important for analysts and also decision makers and investors for that matter. 